All right, everybody. All right, Zane from Really Easy AI. We're back. We are back at it. Part two of uh, working with our batches, and we're um, we're continuing on. We were talking. We had ended up talking about getting batch status, but there's one more thing I wanted to talk about real quick because I don't uh, think I really pointed it out. And that is you can get the batch status from the interface, just like you can do a lot of stuff from the interface. Almost everything we're doing, or I guess actually everything we're doing, you can do from the interface as well. So real quick, I just wanted to show you that. If you want to work from the interface, it's not a problem. You'll just go to your OpenAI API area. Um, here I'm in the dashboard. And then I'll go to my batches and I can see the status of all my batches here. Now, it's been a little bit since I did this, so let me update. I doubt any of these have changed because I think this was completed anyway. Yeah, it's complete, so it wouldn't matter. Uh, but I'll do a quick refresh, let's see. Make sure none of the statuses have changed. Uh, doesn't look like it. everything's still looking good here. Okay, so yeah, you can at a glance kind of see all the successful ones have no message, and then you can click on them and they'll show completed. And they'll show all the information that you want, and including a timeline, which is really nice. Um, and then uh, you will get to output later on, which you can actually download the output. And then failed items, same deal. And you can see those that failed, those that were canceled, uh, and so on and so forth. So there you have it. And you can see all kinds of good stuff. Now, uh, it even gives you the error message too. So makes life really, really easy. So if, if all you do is batches from the interface, that's perfectly fine if you're not having to script stuff out. But usually we're doing batches because we're having to script things out and run them in a production environment somewhere as part of something, right? Maybe a pipeline or something. So that's why we do it mostly through code. Um, but the interface is really good for this. One of the few times that I'm actually going to compliment OpenAI on their... Uh, you know, on something they implemented. Honestly, I complain about them a little bit, but um, they are the best game out there. So far, they're still the 800-pound gorilla. There's folks nipping at their heels, but, um, you know, despite all their problems, they are still the best game uh, in town. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, we had ended up uh, talking about statuses, uh, we're pretty much done with status. Just want to make sure that we had gone through all that real quick. So uh, let's see here. So remember, to get the status, you have to retrieve it just like you had to do with any object in the OpenAI API. <coughs> First time you run an object, you get a reference to that object, and it'll just you know give you the status at the time of creation. And then to get any other status, you have to retrieve that object. Uh, we did talk about dealing with errors, and we went through, and I, I dealt with the errors, so I think we're good there. And uh, I think that was it. Did we talk about dealing with good batches? Um, if you've got a good batch, it'll give you a status of in progress. I, th I think we talked about that, but if not, it's pretty straightforward. It'll give you a status of in progress, and of course, when you're done, it'll give you a status of completed. Let me look at the code. Let's see here, because we had done one. We said uh, this one had an error. Uh, mismatched model and then we'd fixed it after that this one should have been yeah there it is in progress okay yeah we talked about that perfect and then if i if i get the update uh again it should show this one's still erroring out um because we are, are yeah we didn't fix the error and then this one should show done well i won't bother with that because we'll we'll list the batches and show some other stuff that shows completed as well plus we just saw it all right, let's move on. The next thing we want to talk about is listing batches. Yes, it is time to talk about listing batches. Okay, let's jump into it. So you can list your batches from the interface. Uh, it's not overly difficult to do. Um, in order to do it, all you have to do is jump into your interface. And I thought I had it up, but I didn't. Let me pull it up. Let's see here. Get it in my dashboard. Pull this over for you guys so you can kind of see what's going on here. So I just uh, popped over to my dashboard real quick. And now I'm about to uh, jump into my uh, my batches. And there's your list right there. List of batches right there. So real super easy. Not hard to do at all. 
All right. Um, so, uh, and again, it's going to give you all the statuses and all the good stuff that you could possibly want. So it's a fairly straightforward uh, animal. All right, let's go ahead and uh, move on. Uh, and to list the match then, uh, you've got two options. You can do after for pagination. We've seen that a million times. Notice it doesn't have before, by the way. It just has after. And then you can do limit for the number of items to limit. And trust me, you absolutely want to use that because these things get quite verbose. All right, so uh, let's do a demo. Listing batches, pretty straightforward animal. Let's jump into it. So I've got some code here, listing batches. Uh, to list the batches, just client batches list. And then I highly recommend you use limit unless you just want to blow out all your batches. Um, and then here for this example, I went ahead and converted the batches list that it gives us to an actual Python list. So I can get the total number here. So I'll get the length of that. And then uh, I'm actually iterating through the um, iterating through that list here for batch and batches, iterating through and getting the batch ID status descriptions here. I do metadata.get, so I can pull out any of that metadata. Uh, and then just for fun, I wanted to do just the good batches. So I look for any batches that has a description that starts with good. And you can do a variety of techniques to pull out any piece of data from the batch you want and filter it. This is how you're going to do your filtering. Uh, if you want to do a deep dive on batches, you can. I've included a link to do that. Um, there's some interesting stuff going on there. And I thought it, it, batches in particular don't have a ton of uh, documentation beyond just the simple stuff. There's a lot going on there, but most of it, it doesn't work uh, just yet. Okay, like for example, there's like... A, uh, extra query things you can put in and all kinds of cool stuff, but they don't work yet. They haven't uh, turned them on yet. All right, let's go ahead and run this. Uh, and when I run this, what I should get is one of these items, which I get. So I get the first item in the list. And, and by the way, it does list the items in descending order, as, as I understand it. So uh, you should get the latest batch that you did. Uh, we can confirm that, though. Let's check out this batch ID. Uh, ends with FYN1F. All right, let's head on over to, you know, let's just confirm it. Let's head on over to our batch list, our list of batches. Uh, what was that? FY, FYN1F. Okay, and let's take a look at our list of batches. Looking back at our list of batches. Yep, there it is, the most recent. 5.56 a.m. on the 7th. FYN1F. So it will list them in descending order uh, by default. Again, might be nice if you could manipulate the order or do something else with it. Right now, that just is not the case. However, by dumping them into a Python list, we can get crazy with them. All right, so we get that. Um, and then, of course, I get my number. There, I actually have 33 batches. Uh, then I list out all the batches, just you know, looping through the batches and listing them. And then finally, let's go in the text editor here. So I've got good and bad, bad batches in that list. And then finally, I get down to my just good batches and all I have are just listing the good batches from the most recent all the way down to uh, the first one, first good batch I had. So there you go. It's a pretty straightforward animal, nothing really overly complex, but a lot of fun and you can list out your batches. All right, let's move on. Uh, moving on, we now have uh, canceling a batch. So yes, you can cancel your batches. So if you've got a batch, it's been running for a while or whatever, you just decide you don't need it, you can abandon your batches. To cancel a batch, it's real simple. You just call cancel. Um, and uh, here you see uh, I have some code here that I wanted to use to show you how it works, where I... Uh, I, I create a batch called dead batch walking and then I let it sleep for five seconds. I retrieve its status. So I get the initial status, which is, is validating. Then I retrieve its status, which should be in progress. Then I cancel it, which gives me a status canceling. And then I retrieve that status after five seconds. And it should give me a status of canceled to show you the entire life cycle of a, of a cancel operation. So let's go ahead and demo that. Jump down into our code. So here's the code. I create dead batch walking. 
And I, I give it the good batch input because I want it to actually complete. Uh, so I let it run. It's a good nightly penguin job. And then we can watch the statuses. Here we go. Boom. It'll begin with the status of um, validating. See their status of validating. Five seconds later, it gives me my in progress. So it's underway. And then it also, I do a cancellation right away and it begins canceling. And then five seconds after that, it should say canceled, except it didn't because reasons. All right, well, let me extend the timeline a little bit. We'll make it 10 seconds. If you're going to be like that, let's do it. All right, validating. Five seconds in progress. Canceling and 10 seconds later, because it was being difficult, it should say canceled now. Still says canceling, huh? That is special. Not sure why. It should say canceled. It shouldn't take that long to cancel it. Unless, of course, well, it is kind of the morning. Maybe things are picking up. Man, that is crazy, though. I was doing it last night, and it was canceling like super duper fast. So it still says canceling. Depending on what time of day you do it, and depending on how much free processing time it has, it may or may not show canceled right away. Last night it was only taking five seconds to cancel. Uh, but now, you know, the day is getting started. People are starting to use it heavy. Uh, I guess it's taking a little longer. Yeah, there you go. Okay, but this will in fact say canceled when it's done. All right, moving on. I just got to do it one more time. It's killing me. It's killing me. Let me, let me do 15 seconds. I don't think it's going to change, though. I think it's because people are starting to use it uh, first thing in the morning. So we got validating, and then we've got in progress. Then we got canceling. It's amazing what kind of things I get wrapped around the axle on, isn't it? Just something little like that because it annoys me. My OCD won't let it go. I want to see it canceled. I just want to see it canceled. Ah, uh, no, yeah, it's not going to play. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. All right, let's do getting the results. Um, whoops, get a little ahead of myself. Now let's talk about getting batch output files. Um, so uh, when you're, so for input files, you have to have a certain format, and the output files will have a certain format as well. They'll have an ID, custom ID, so that you can track. That's the mapping. That's why you give a custom ID in the input, so you can map it to the custom ID in the output. That's how you put all this stuff together. Response, of course, and any errors uh, that may have occurred uh, that are non-HTTP. All right, so this is what a response would look like. Uh, it indicate uh, which batch request it was, custom ID, response, status code, 200 is success, request ID if you want it, body, chat completion, created model that it used. Now, I remember we told it GPT-4, and it went ahead and added the extra pieces to it. Um, message, role assistant, and then it, content, and then the actual response, um, and then any additional things. Notice the log problems is there. I found that interesting. Uh, finish reason, you know, stop, it just got done. Prompt tokens, 27. Completion tokens, 374. Total tokens 401, and I believe we allowed for a thousand tokens. So uh, it just got done. It didn't end because it ran out of tokens. It ended, you know, it would have said that. Uh, so you can do finished reason to keep track of whether or not you're you're running out of tokens or stopping legitimately. And then that's it. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Let's do a demo of that. Oh crap! Forgot to tell you. Yes, you can do this through the interface. Absolutely, you can do this through the interface. Um, when you're looking at your batches here, let me refresh. See, it's still canceling those. That's that's amazing. Still canceling. Um, but uh, you can uh, uh, you can get the uh, the output from here. It'll show you the timeline that uh, everything created. For, we'll do a successful one, batch created, batch in progress, batch finally, batch completed. And you see download output, you can click on that and it will download the output for you. So super easy, not a problem at all. Here, I'll just do a quick download. There it goes, boom, I just downloaded it, lucky me. Now, um, let's do it through code though. That's the way we wanna do is through code. So let's do it through code. 
And so here we are. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create a variable to hold our uh, file. So we do client files content, and then we retrieve the batch um, by its batch ID. And then we get the output file ID from the retrieved batch. So this is what I happen to do. Now, if you just want to manually put in the uh, output file ID, you can. But all these batches come with an output file ID when they're done. So the completed batches when they're done will come with an output file ID. And then you're going to grab that output file ID and just say, in my case, I just did content write to file and then had it put out a file called good batch output. All right, let's run it. We should see in our file list, there's good batch output. We'll open her up. Let me, uh, there we go. There it is. There's the response. Everything I showed you before, you obviously in the, uh, you got your role assistant and then here's all your penguin content. Now, watch out because it's got, you know, you're going to have to format it once you get it. So be aware of that. Uh, and there's some Unicode in there. Check that out. So you are going to have to do some formatting or have something to take care of the formatting for you. Also, uh, there may be some markup in here and all kinds of stuff. So you're going to have to be prepared to deal with all that. So make sure you're keeping that in mind. Okay. All right. That is that. I think we're in good shape. In fact, I think that may be it, boys and girls. Let me see. Yeah, that's it. We're done. Whoa, we're done with batches. So just two parts on batches. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, pretty straightforward animal. And then we're going to keep going through the APIs. Uh, I'm not sure which API we're going to do next. I guess uh, I'll just do a coin flip. Uh, but uh, at this point, I think we've kind of done all the file-related stuff, so we could move on maybe to text-to-speech or, oh, I know, Vision. Obviously, Vision's the next one we're going to have to do. So we'll be doing the Vision API next, and then we'll move on to uh, text-to-speech, speech-to-text, and all that. All right, boys and girls, this is Zane. I'll see you next time.